created such wonderful facilities for chemical engineers. I'm looking forward to the successful completion of the building works and importantly to the future of chemical engineering programs and the growth of chemical engineering programs of, um, of facilities, staff and everything at Southampton with a strong focus on sustainability. I'd like to thank everyone who has contributed to delivering this investment for the future of chemical engineering which will support world-class teaching and research. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Mohammed Hassan Sayed, Associate Professor of Chemical Engineering and Director of Programs. Behind you, behind me here, in terms of the economy. It's the 
the driving catalyst of our society here. Without the supply and demand, without the exchange of money and goods, we don't have a functioning society. But for economy to exist and be healthy, it has to be within a healthy society. The equality, the diversity, the education, the health, the wealth, all the different elements here. And for us to exist within that society and have that equality, we need to have the biosphere as healthy as possible in terms of life above sea, under the water, the plants, the emissions, the global change, and other things like that. So the integration of the three of them can only happen through joint partnership, where different people look at sustainability in different points of view, but integrated together in terms of thinking of their level, but thinking of the holistic picture together. Now, when I came here, I had to sit with chemists and I had to sit with engineers. And I thought like the word engineers because it refers to a group of people, but there are civil engineers, mechanical engineers, automotive engineers. There are different people who understand engineering in a different mentality. And then there are chemists. Chemists will look at things. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But they look at things in terms of your femtosecond and in terms of your micrograms. And they start looking at things from. <laughs> The periodic table, I can plug anything from here, I can use it any way I want. Doesn't matter about time, doesn't matter about things. I'm not degrading chemistry because they are a catalyst to our society and existence here. But the outward thinking of how a chemist will behave, and then looking at engineers who sit here at the university and think from a moving part, mechanical, or think about it from a, uh, a, a equistic point of view because they help contribute some of the elements here meant that I had to actually define chemical engineering as the first task to actually building a course in chemical engineering. Chemical engineering is simply math, chemistry, economy, sustainability, all integrated together. We're in all walks of life. We take raw materials, we upscale them for processing, we cook them in the reactor, we separate the bad products, we use the useful products, then we recycle, we think about it. We do this in a general stroke. And we are in every walk of life. From the time you wake up to the time you sleep, chemical engineer must be involved in your society. Medication, pharmaceuticals, food, transportation, anything you think of, chemical engineer is behind it here. So we are the masters of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's who we are, and we are going to think about the educational shifts, sorry, I've put in a lot of references as an academic, I have to pluck ideas from, you know, I, I, no man is an island, you stand on the shoulder of people behind you. And I'm grateful to those people who publish a lot of paper in terms of the education of chemical engineering and how chemical engineering should happen. The first element they establish for us is I need to maintain the integrity on the core of chemical engineering. It cannot shift towards chemistry because it changes its identity. It can't go towards a diluted engineering element because it becomes an industrial scientist industrial engineering, it's far away from the core of what chemical engineering is. Upscaling, reaction, and separation at the heart of it. So with that element in mind, how do I modernize the course? And reading through the papers, understanding the philosophies of educators before me, it comes to the idea of, I need to go to the chemist first of all. I need to understand the modularization and the building blocks of the universe, the chemistry, and then how can I bring that out of the lab into the processing, into the economy sphere, and into the global sphere to maintain the economy and maintain the sustainability element here. So molecular level became important. The sources of energy, where do we get our energy from? I said my PhD is all about bioenergy, so that's one element, but hydrogen is coming in, renewable energy is coming in, geothermal is there. There is a shift from the petroleum element, but petroleum is a part of everyday life and it's part of the building block life that we have to think of how we can modernize it rather than completely annihilate it here. And then there, we need to think of the process technology itself. I mean, most of my research, as Nuno Lebron will refer to, is about multi-criteria decision-making in sustainable processing. So it links in between the micro levels, the macro levels, and try and bring them all together, and how do I take the decisions to develop new elements or integrate new elements into it here. But I want, that processing to be linked into the fundamentals and bridge that element between the lab further in. And then I need to emphasize the terms of commercialization, enterprise, the knowledge exchange, all these elements have to be featured within the course here. We need to think of the new merging areas, the bio, the nano, all these are merging new areas in technology. They have their own identities. 
So you must not dominate what chemical engineering does. Chemical engineering has to complement what they do and bring it alive. And that takes us into the next point about green chemistry and its 12 commandments, and between environmental engineering and its 12 commandments. Now, each one of them operates in a different spectrum, but we, as chemical engineers, have to understand the micro level, the macro level, and bring that into a reality element here. And then develop our links with the industries, and I'm grateful to people such as Tracy here, who helped establish this, as well as everyone else in the industrial board, because your advice through the development of this board has meant that I can optimize what I do in this board here, and the fact that you provided projects for my undergraduate students, for my master's students, the fact that you're discussing different avenues and different researches with us, helped us get the course fertile. So without industry, we are creating irrelevant people, and that's not what we want. It's all about the link between the cradle to employability cycle that we have here, or our duty at universities. And then, I'm sure David will agree with this point, is we need to recruit the brightest people uh, to take us into the future here, but we need to get them excited about chemical engineering. We need to do our outreach programs, we need to go into schools and understand, make them understand what chemical engineering is. Most junior people are exposed to the fundamentals, chemistry, bath, physics, math, they understand mechanical engineering because they see a formula one race, but chemical engineering is something that disillusions them and we need to go back to the grassroots and help understand what chemical engineering is to shape the next generation appropriately. So taking that in mind, sorry that's the philosophy of chemical engineering, <laughs> moving into what I started doing in January with the help of Zoe and Andrew Russell and then Nuno joined us in April and it became a, a labour of love to develop this child basically here and it became about Chemical engineering exists in all walks of life. We need to preserve the value of what we actually generate and manufacture. So we need to keep in touch with what the core of chemical engineering is. But we also need to look at the value creation in terms of new products and new technologies merging into our system and how we can integrate this here. And <coughs> we need to develop a further link between chemical engineering's identity, but between the supporting elements in terms of different engineering walks and between sciences and bridge that in to actually have the students or have the people who are engaging in this board to develop that link between the lab and the process. And the process does not just exist in terms of a distillation column, there is a pump there and the pump is a mechanical part, so to give a holistic picture here. Address the real world changes, and this is a tricky part because you have to integrate globalization and economy and environment and food and technology and although we manufacture the products for them to actually bring the fundamentals of economy into a chemical engineering class and then bring in the ethics and then bring in the project management in a hugging orientated core element is quite tricky. And at the same time, we want to educate the next generation to become our ambassadors. They are part of the process of education and throughout these lists here, you'll see the entire SDGs mentioned through all of them here. So we came up with the slogan, we're shaping the future, we're going to change minds, and we're changing the landscape of chemical engineering for the future, basically. We decided to offer a classical chemical engineering course with a modern twist. It's either a three-year orientation or a four-year career orientation with an industrial year, but we operate on the best and the brightest coming in, so we require high A-levels in terms of maths and chemistry and a third one, physics preferably, but we have some students with computer science, economy, and other aspects coming into the course. And it became a philosophy of, it's a principally a chemical engineering course. It's not gonna deviate from chemical engineering whatsoever, so we maintain the core of chemical engineering. But as we progress through the four years of that chemical engineering course, in year one, I need to meet the scope of the design heavy in the fundamentals of engineering and chemistry while maintaining the integrity of chemical engineering and the core of chemical engineering fundamentals here. And that's what we've achieved in year one, I'll explain this further later on. Then in year two, we move to enhancing the core of chemical engineering, making the different building blocks that will assemble chemical engineering in, but making sure it has an outward focus in terms of sustainability and digitization. Our students are more traumatized for understanding that ethics behind safety and environment and why it is important to do it in particle technology, for instance, because that's what they're studying at the moment. And then as they move into year three, it became a process of them assembling the knowledge, 
gaining the depth and breadth of chemical engineering and showing us all this through the master designs that they do or the group design projects that they do here. And then year four, we've integrated the commercialization, we've integrated the safety at a higher level. Obviously, it's an integrated master, so it's at a higher level here. And we try to maintain the growth of the students while maintaining the elements of sustainability from day one, digitization from day one, safety from day one, throughout the cycle of the course here. So this is the plan that we have here, and you see it's very colorful. Orange stands for engineering, the red stands for chemistry, yellow is math, and blue is chemical engineering. And in year one, design and computing. Now that's an evolving course from Spec 1001 to now 1021. It keeps evolving, because it takes at the heart of it, digitization, learning how to program, learning the elements of commercialization from a design point of view. So we're not just looking at a design or a sketch element, it's looking at the progress of the design, the consultation meetings, the development of the economy, the ethics, the commercialization. It's a very heavy unit and it takes about 30 credits. Then the fundamentals of engineering are mentioned in terms of uh, thermal fluids, mechanics, uh, materials, they're all mentioned in these two units here, so the students will have a holistic understanding of all the principles required. Then obviously there's a link to chemistry, so chemistry principles are featured here as its own unique course, and it has a heavy reliance on the lab base, so student dexterity are developed through that. Then you have the principles of chemical engineering, it's not just material energy balance, it's the building element of chemical engineering that we wanted to pursue here, and there is a heavy lab element component here and obviously engineering math. As students move on to year two, we have the core of chemical engineering. So we have separations, we have reaction engineering. It's all orientated around the dexterity. Every module that you see in front of you is between 40 to 50 to 100% practical. So the dexterity of the students, the involvement between the labs at the micro scale and between the design process is integrated all the elements. We try to, as heavily as possible, between you know, myself and Zongli and Andrea, to get sustainability as a feature of all the learning outcomes of every single module here. We try to match digitization and getting Python coding in everything, because that's what we interpret digitization to, but it's also about presentations, about software skills. We try to make the course holistically. The last unit in year two, you'll see it, is colored in both elements. It's a chemistry unit and it's a chemical engineering unit. It's 100% practical, it runs across the year, and it starts off with the chemistry practicals in semester one, leading to the chemical engineering practicals in semester two, hence bridging that gap element while the knowledge the students pick up throughout the year here. As you move to year three, you move to the advancement reaction engineering in terms of the biosystems, in terms of the catalysis, and we started moving into modularization and intensification, the new frontiers of chemical engineering, not big data, big small while maintaining the quantity outputs. Uh, we have the group design project, 45 credits. It's a big dominant feature of the final year. We also have the environmental, uh, sorry, engineering management and law element here, and we generate an elective so the students can develop an orientation or direction of what they want to do in terms of energy, schools, pharmaceuticals, output here. Now at this stage, the students can graduate or can they move on to an integrated MSc, uh, uh, MNG year, and that is dominated by three features. You have your individual research that you end up doing, but we have two specialized units here. One is an advancement of safety, further because safety is important to chemical engineering. It, you know, if you think safety is expensive, try a disaster. That's what Professor Fritz said, and he's the father of health and safety in chemical engineering. So we wanted safety as a main element here. But design for commercialization was a unique idea between Professor Andrea Russell and myself. We absolutely loved the idea. It was the concept of Dragon's Den for chemistry. Our students would be aligned to different research groups in chemistry to take that research and demonstrate to us how we can move the commercial elements into it and integrate the business and commit into it. It's not about a design process because they've already designed and applied all the design tools. It's more about the commercialization of the software, the future world which the university invested heavily in, getting that knowledge exchange and impact from chemistry into the real world through a chemical engineer's eyes because we have to transfer chemistry research into reality here. And then there are electives about the further steps and depth in terms of auto refineries, bioenergies and other things like that. More electives were materialized 
as the number of half its time. But for the time being, between me and Nuno, we can't teach everything here, so we had to minimize what we offer. We also offered the masters this one year, and we have some of our master's students here, and we have a group design project to mimic what the requirements of the ITME is. It's an integrated process, and we're very grateful to our local refinery, Paulie and Tracy and her team, for donating a project to us here and agreeing to act as a commercial consultant to this project where they give master classes and they change the scope every once in a while for the students to stay on their feet. So you give the students the real world experience and we're grateful for that learning here. Process optimization and control is essentially Nuna's domain, but it's all about the control systems and how they impact on the advanced level here. Professional aspects of chemical engineering. Now, this is not my design, but I actually adopted the course as my own nowadays. And I'm grateful to Andrea for coming up with this concept here. It's a holistic concept. We start off with professionalism and what does chemical engineering mean to us. Then we move on to the ethical elements and we highlight that element of complacency. Then we bring in the safety element and the desire for safety and environment and sustainability, all these things here. And then we move it on to the economy and the commercialization element before the last end of the course is actually the chemical process design optimization. So it's a holistic environmental, uh, holistic professional aspect in all walks of life. They have to do presentations, they have to do teamwork, they have to build everything, and it means everything. Very proud of it. Reaction design, reactive design for sustainable processes. Now, Dr. Liu, I'm grateful for that here. You helped in designing this course, and it's a holistic course. We start off with green chemistry, environmental engineering, the building blocks. We look at how we use the materials, and then we move into bioreactors as the new frontiers for reactors. And then, Adrian, I'm grateful to you for contributing a large element in terms of the flow chemistry and how we can minimize while maintaining continuous processing into the element here. And then we have the MSc research project, which they do, and then an array of electives that they choose from around the university. We're grateful to the environmental engineering group for donating the water courses to this course here. And some of the chemistry courses from Jeremy, hopefully, in the future. Now, I'm not going to dwell a lot on the estate and what we've done. We've tried to meet the task. We've tried to re-innovate chemical engineering. We've assembled the best equipment we can. We have 20 different experiments in chemical engineering, as well as level four and five access to a range of chemistry elements here. It's an endeavor that everyone talks about, about the spending of the money, and I get the number right, so I'm just... <laughs> 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 but it's beyond that. Chemistry is a very active school within the university, and they are very proud of being a research-led institute, and they have many research organizations here, which we are grateful that our students can contribute or contribute to their development here. So I think we've achieved what we tried to set out with myself and Nunu and Gong Li and Andrea here in terms of establishing a sustainable chemical engineering that has an outward future that integrates the economy within the society, within the biosphere here, meeting the university strategies within the budget. <laughs> <laughs> and we were very grateful for that. So, but that's not the only thing that we've done here. Between Nuno and myself, we set up different research collaborations with different people around the university here, as well as trying to foster our own research nucleus here. So I'll give you Professor Nuno, or Associate Professor Nuno now, okay, to come and present to you about the research that we do here.